sedimentary rocks peeling back the layers of time. It just sounds so poetic, doesn't it? And what's neat about sedimentary rocks is they are that. They are basically a picture book of Earth's past. I'm good at this stuff. So here's an example. Large parts of the United States in Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada have been desert for a long time. But they've also been, at one point, the bottom of a shallow sea. And they were also, at one point, a large amount of freshwater lakes. All of these lakes and deserts and sea bottoms had a lot of sediment. Because when you think about it, what's at the bottom of the ocean? Sand. What's at the bottom of a lake? Mud. Right? And these sediments get deposited. And over time, they become sedimentary rocks. So you can look right here. This is a sandstone in Bryce Canyon. It looks like sand actually stacked up. It's made of rock and the various layers. And one thing about sedimentary rock, they come in layers. So sedimentary rocks, three categories as well, and it's basically their construction. Clastic rocks, clastic sedimentary rocks, are basically pieces of other rocks that broke down. So sandstone is formed from sand. And sand is just other pieces of rock that have broken down into tiny little pieces. If you look at a handful of sand at our beach in Chicago and looked at it under a microscope, it's actually really, really tiny pieces of quartz. That's why it kind of has that tan color. And quartz usually comes from granite. So you can see all these different types. Organic sedimentary rocks are a mixture. So uh, chalk is a mixture of, sh of shell fragments from ancient tiny little animals. And coal is a... Uh, remains of plants. And then the last one are chemical sedimentary rocks. So for instance, if you had a glass of salt water, right, and if you evaporated the water, what's left behind is a salt. You have a layer of salt that can turn into rock salt. So rock salt's one or gypsum. Let's talk about those a little bit. All sedimentary rocks are formed in what we call a depositional environment. In other words, if it's a sedimentary rock and it's made of sediments, Sediments have to be deposited, right? That kind of a it's, it's almost self-evident, but we don't think about that. <clears throat> Sedimentary rock can never form under the surface of the earth because there's nowhere to deposit the rocks. It's already there. So sedimentary rocks only form on the surface of the earth and then eventually get buried, right? You need sediments to be laid down. Secondly, the type of rock that is formed is like a picture. If you see sandstone, that tells you that when that sandstone was, was formed, sediments of sand were deposited. So the environment must have been one that had sand, like a desert or a beach. But if the sediment is clay or silt, then that's not going to be a desert because silt is not formed in a desert. It's formed in a swamp or an estuary. And so we can actually look at these and look back. Here's a good example. Areas that are deserts, that have sand dunes, so beaches and deserts, those are deposits of sand. So if we find sandstone, then that means at one time that was a desert or a beach, right? What about river floodplains? Rivers, the sediments they transport are clay or mud or silt, that really kind of fine grainy stuff you find at the bottom of rivers. That becomes things like shale or slate. Um, we see wet environments where there's lots of little animals, sea animals and shells, which form calcium in the seashells that form calcium carbonate or limestone or chalk. So when we see chalk, that was once the bottom of a shallow sea. So in other words, we can actually use the layers of rocks, and if we can date those rocks, if we know that sandstone is 25 million years old, that means that 25 million years ago, this was a beach or a desert. That's how we can look back and when they say, how do you know that the Grand Canyon was at one time the bottom of an ocean X million numbers of years ago? That is how we do it, actually. Another interesting thing is that if you look at the total amount of the crust, so the first 20 miles, right, almost all of it is igneous or metamorphic rocks. Only 4% of the crust is made of sedimentary rock, but what is the type of rock on the actual surface? Three quarters of it is sedimentary rock. Because rocks that are igneous are usually formed deep down in the earth. They cool off like batholiths and lacolis. Um, and as we'll talk about, metamorphic rocks need to be buried for that to happen. So, and sedimentary rocks can only form on the surface in a depositional environment. So it's kind of an interesting little mix. In other words, they form at the surface. Okay. So, 
Here's some examples. We've talked about the three ways. Shale, we'll talk about them right here. So shale, as a rock, is formed from silt. And silt is what we find usually in estuaries, the bottom of the ocean, that kind of really fine, almost like a, like a muck, right? And so this deposit of shale in Fort Plain, New York, today is hundreds of miles from the ocean. But we know that when this was formed, and let's just say it was 22 million years ago, that the environment was like this 22 million years ago. What about sandstone? So sand dunes over time are buried and become sandstone. So we knew Zion National Park, this at one point, had sand dunes. Today it's the high desert. The Grand Canyon, we see a lot of limestone. And we know limestone forms in shallow seas, nice warm water. Lots of little animals in their little shells that die and they, they deposit on the bottom and become crushed and become limestone. So when we see deposits of limestone in the Grand Canyon and say we can date that to 65 million years ago, we know that 65 million years ago this was the bottom of a shallow sea. Some sedimentary rocks are valuable. Coal. We use coal for a lot of things, and coal is a rock, it is sedimentary, it's formed from the organic remains of forests. Now, it can be bituminous coal, which forms from peat, kind of has this dull, dusty, barky brown color, or, as we'll talk about, it can be a metamorphic form. Bituminous coal, once it undergoes metamorphic transition, being buried under the earth for millions of years and basically changed, becomes anthracite, which is a form of coal. And actually, this is more valuable than bituminous coal. It burns hotter, more energy. And coal itself forms from peat. So in bogs and marshes, all that plant remains get buried. And if they get buried over time and compressed, they turn into kind of this really thick, dark. It's more than just dirt, but less than a rock. You can actually burn this for, uh, for fuel. But peat can be compacted. It can turn into coal. And coal is extremely valuable. 36% um, of all the energy we use is coal. That includes the energy that we get from cars, which isn't gas. But more importantly, I think it's about 85% of our electricity comes from burning coal. Coal mining has a negative side. Uh, to mine the coal can be destructive. Mountaintop mining, just like the name implies, you literally cut off the top of a mountain, strip the surface off, take the coal out. It can be environmentally devastating. And as I said before, Right, All sedimentary rocks are a snapshot, so we know that most of the coal in the world is about 65-70 million years old and it's formed from ancient wetlands, large forests. So when we find these big huge deposits of coal, <coughs> we know this area was a large huge forest like this 65 million years ago. So we can see these vast swaths of coal around the world. Now I'm going to include petroleum, excuse me. <coughs> as oil, right, it's not technically a mineral in the sense that it is liquid, but we do talk about it because we do see it usually in conjunction with sedimentary rocks. Certain sedimentary rocks will have oil with them. Oil is not a mineral, it's a hydrocarbon. It's basically mixtures of hydrogen and carbon and other chemicals that store a lot of energy that are, is released when we burn it. And this comes not so much from plants, but from ancient animals, um, zooplankton, phytoplankton. You could joke and say it's dinosaur bones. Another mineral, kind of in a sense, is shale gas. So we're going to talk more about this, but shale is a rock, it's a sedimentary rock, right, that has trapped within it uh, methane gas. And until recently, the gas was useless to us, we could not extract it affordably. Uh, we're going to talk more about how we now can with uh, fracking later in this chapter. Another type of um, rock, uh, sedimentary rock we have, is evaporites. So if you have minerals that are dissolved in water, like salt, you can't see it, but it's there. If you evaporate the water, when water evaporates, it leaves behind the minerals. So if you have a lake that is salty and it dries up in the sun, you leave behind a layer of salt right here. This actually is um, interesting. Lithium is an evaporite, so your lithium batteries for your phones is a mineral that's found in deposits. Gypsum, which is in the drywall in your house, and then table salt. This right here is one of the largest salt flats in the world. It's in Bolivia. It is the remains of an ancient salt lake that dried up millions of years ago. Uh, it's very, very flat, and it's usually dry like this. You can drive across it uh, every spring 
it gets maybe about a inch or two of water covering this whole area, which is a couple hundred square miles. And people go in the area and they use the shovels because the water kind of dissolves the salt and they pile up salt piles for harvest. But you get evaporates this way. Here you have this lake or an ocean and water comes in with its chemicals, but something causes evaporation and the lake dries up. So we'll talk about this process a few more chapters, but in deserts, a lot of times you have these small, shallow, salty lakes every spring. Uh, the snow on the mountain melts, it flows down to these little shallow lakes, and then it evaporates. And every time it does, it leaves a layer. And then next spring, you see another lake form which evaporates. Every year it leaves a layer. And so you have this layer and layer and layer of different minerals formed from evaporation. And if it gets buried over time and buried deep, that's how you get evaporates down into the ground. Another thing we find that is not necessarily a rock, but very interesting, are fossils, right? So a fossil is just the impression or remains of life, either as, you know, as a bone or a plant or whatever you see that is preserved in sedimentary rock. So a lot of what we know about our ancient history of our species and life comes from fossils. And they are always found in sedimentary rock. And so you think about that. Why would there be no fossils in igneous rock? So think about it. Do the math. What is igneous rock, right? It's rock formed from liquid rock, which is pretty hot. Anything that was buried in it, like any bodies that were buried, would be burnt, incinerated. But with sedimentation, right, they're just buried and compressed over time. So fossils tell us a lot of things. They obviously tell us stuff like this area was once a forest. This is the Petrified National Forest. These are fossilized trees, right? So they tell us that. They tell us different things about the layers. We've talked about dating, right? That the youngest fossils are at the top and the oldest fossils are at the bottom. So if we find fossils in this layer and we know their age based on other measurements, then we can date the layer of sedimentation right here. We can also see patterns of extinction. If we see these fossils right here for this species, but we don't see them after it, we know they went extinct right about this layer of rock. And if we can date the time of the rock, then we have a good idea. All right, that's the second part. Now we're going to come back with the metamorphic rocks.